Vaughn Cash Show. I'm your host, Vaughn. Hope y'all are doing well. Today, I'm talking about being single or choosing to be single. Um, I know it sounds weird, choosing to be single, right? I think that society, media, and our culture puts a big, you know, emphasis on being with someone settling down, especially a certain age. I'm 31, so, you know, um, you know, I have friends, relatives, and you may too, around this age or younger, who have a family, have a steady relationship, got married, etc. Um, you know, for those of us who are single, around this age or whatever, uh, we may sometimes feel like we're lacking. You know, we're lacking that partner, that person to complete us, right? Makes us whole. But then you think, like, are you really born, like, not whole, per se? Like, do you, like, what would it be like, you know, for you, think about it, if you'd be single for the rest of your life? Would that make you upset, lonely? Would you be fine with it? It's kind of a tough thing to think about because you know it's hard to think about the future in that sense. We never know who you'll run into in life, but you know, are you content? Like, if you didn't have a significant other, or if you don't have one, would you be okay? Like, do you feel lonely? Um, I think a lot of us want a relationship, right? We want to be with someone for the rest of our lives, get married, which is wonderful. I'm all for that. But there's some of us who haven't attained that yet or actively choose not to attain that, who like being alone. Um, I'm one of those that I like to be alone um, most of the time. I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm open for dating and hookups are great, but I just don't see myself really committing. Not to say that I'll be cheating or anything, but I don't know. I kind of like my alone time and I don't know, I just, I don't fit, I don't feel like I fit that, that mold. You know, it took me a while to realize, you know, I've been single for 10 plus years, and at first, you know, I was very uncomfortable with it. It was unsettling, you know. When you see friends, family members, relatives, you know, get boyfriends, girlfriends, start dating, right? You see on social media, all the couple posting, which I'm all cool for, but sometimes when you don't have that person, you might get a bit salty or you might get a bit cynical or you might even feel down. Like, how come I can't get girls? How come I can't get those matches on Tinder or Bumble? Some on Hinge, but it never worked out. And you kind of wonder if you're like inferior or something, right? Whether like there's something wrong with you. And it took me a while and I realized, nah, I'm good. I just don't think I want to be in a relationship. You know, I don't know about you, but this one's for those who are single who, or who choose not to be in one. You know, um, it took me a while to realize that I was lacking, you know, self-love, right? How many of y'all constantly have to date someone? or to be in a relationship. I think it's called serial dating, where you just have to have someone with you to be happy or to feel okay. I think I was like that too, where I just kept talking to a bunch of girls back to back, never really giving myself the time and effort to focus on me. You know, like self-love, as weird as it may sound, I think a lot of us may not love ourselves the way we should. It sounds so weird, right? Like, you always tell someone, 
I love you, or maybe not everyone, but family members, close friends, relatives, I love you, right? But when's the last time you're like, I love me? Even that sounds weird saying, I love myself. Like, that sounds forced. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't think I did for a while because I never really gave myself the attention of like, what do I really need? Like, am I, am I getting into a relationship because I need to feel okay? Is it hiding something? Do I like some sort of anxiety or some sort of fear that I'm gonna mask up with being with someone? You know, because that way it'll take out that attention from that negative stuff, kind of place it over to the good things, you know, that partner, that girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, right? Even when they're around. So when they're not around, that's when you kind of feel like, oh shit, I need to be with someone. I was like that for a while. Um, I neglected myself a lot. You know, um, I don't think I really spend the time to kind of look within and say, hey, what do I need to work on? So, with that said, I don't think you're to blame if you feel like you need to have a girlfriend, boyfriend, partner. It's called partner. So many things out there. I don't think you're to blame if you feel like, if you, feel like you have to have a partner. I mean, look how we were brought up. Most of us saw movies. Disney movies usually always is a love story to some degree. Lion King, uh, Nala and Simba, Little Mermaid, Eric and Ariel, Beauty and the Beast, Belle and the Beast, right? Just to name a few. This shows you how old I am. I'm 31, by the way. So when those movies came out, I was a kid. I don't know about the movies out now. Um, so many different comedy slash romance movies, right? Where, you know, it's always a guy that needs to get the girl at the end or vice versa, the girl gets the guy, you know. Um, their lives are transformed when they, before and after, before they meet the girl or guy, partner, they're like losers or they're just not being the best they can be. But then they, they encounter this person and like their eyes light up, you know, their lives change. And, you know, when they get with them, they're so much happier, right? Or it's a slow, subtle thing. Um, when you watch, when you grow up watching the media like that, movies, TV shows, you kind of ingrain that mentality like, okay, I need to have a partner at a certain age or I need to be dating, right? And if I'm not, I'm perceived as weird or something wrong with me. And that's not always the case. Um, at first it might be unsettling, especially when you see everyone around you having boyfriends, girlfriends, partners. Oh, third wheels, being the third wheel. Those can be awkward. Um, I'm not so much worried about it now, I don't mind now, but you know, when your friend tells you, oh, let's go on a, me and my partner are going out on a date, you wanna come with us, and you end up just taking all the fucking pictures and shit, right? You're like, fuck, you know? Um, yeah, it took me a while. In my late 20s, I realized, hey, I need to kind of focus on myself first and better myself. Um, so yeah, you know, I don't know how it is with your family. Let me know. Like, are you pressured to settle down if you haven't already? You pressured to start a family? Personally, honestly, me at 31, I still feel like a fucking kid. Um, I commend those that have kids that are younger or around my age, props to you. I know some great parents. I know some great single moms, great single dads, if you're listening to this. I salute you. Um, yeah, I just don't see myself being a father. I could see myself, I guess hypothetically, I could be a good dad, but I just choose not to. 
uh, which I'll be taking, thinking about taking steps towards so I don't become one. I don't want to say it out loud what I'm going to do because family might be listening. <laughs> you know, they know, they know a podcast. But uh, it's a thought. It's a thought that, uh, no, I'm going to do, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to do a fucking podcast. When that shit happens, I'm gonna be like, yo, this is the blank podcast. How's it going? By the way, fam, I'm, but uh, let's put two and two together. But uh, yeah, I just don't see myself being a father, which is kind of weird, I guess, from society's point of view, maybe, culture point of view, because there's the argument that we're here to procreate, right? To reproduce, to have offspring, to carry the name down, pass the name down, keep the family tree expanding, growing. But, uh, yeah, that's gonna be a no for me, dog. <laughs> I was like laughing and being nervous and shit because they're probably fucking listening. But, uh, yeah, you know, I think it's weird because I'm like broadcasting. It's one thing to say it, I guess, on social media, but to say this, that's gonna be out on like all streaming platforms and shit. Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple, iHeartRadio, all that shit, YouTube, that I'm gonna say this, it's like, it's a bit, it's a bit nerve wracking. It, you know, it's kind of funny in a way. So I'm laughing, a bit nervous. Um, but yeah, I, I just don't see myself really being one, you know? Um, and that's okay. I'm pretty sure there are guys or women listening to this that want that don't want to be parents. Honestly, I think girls get more shit for it. Like when women say, Oh, how come you don't want to be a mom? What's wrong? You know, like there's nothing wrong. I think every person has the individual choice and right to say yes or no to that because, you know, it's you know, once the baby comes out, you know, it's big responsibility, it's life changing. So, I've been talking about, you know, me being single, why, um, how society or media, culture kind of like f tells us to not be single, right? Kind of subconsciously tells us to be in a relationship, you know? Um, but before I get into that, you know, what is it, how do you deal with family when they ask you if you have a girlfriend yet? And my family, oi, do you have a girlfriend yet? Or for the girls, do you have a boyfriend? You know, like, how do you deal with that? Let me know. Because um, it can be tough with family, you know, uh, especially around my age when we're slowing down, settling down is supposed to be. But overall, I think my family is pretty cool about it. You know, they understand. They're like, hey, you know, you can always get kids, but be financially stable and be sure it's something you want kind of thing. But I think in the event I'm, you know, hypothetically, they'd be all for it, you know, so thank you, family, for being so supportive. Okay, so I talked about that, but let's see some perks of being single, right? Uh, one thing I mentioned is working on bettering yourself. What does that exactly mean? We all have flaws, you know, they can be minor flaws to things that we really need to change. Whether that be changing our party habits, you know, um, whether it be eating healthier, down to small things like, I don't know, something small like writing shit down, you know, or locking the door or some shit like that. Just things we can work on ourselves to be better, to become better. Um, I always felt like the reason maybe I haven't really found a girl like to be in a relationship with, because I was always looking. There's that phrase that says, it's, you always, it's always when you least expect it, but I was always expecting it. When I went to parties, when I went to bars, it's so dumb. Like, I went to parties for a while and bars in the hopes of like, finding a girl to talk to or like, get laid or some shit. I mean, yeah, like in your early 20s, as a guy, you probably think that, oh yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the bar, bro. I'm gonna go to this party. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a bad girl and shit. But like, sometimes if you do that, it can't happen. But sometimes if you do that, you kind of miss the fun part. You know, kind of miss the surrounding atmosphere. Um, 
like I always felt like when you're in tune with your true self and what you're doing when you're working on improving yourself whether that be working on your credit score you know in school um, just working on interpersonal skills I should have a fucking podcast about interpersonal skills emotional intelligence improving on that how you interact with other people and how do you interact with yourself those are some big things to work on and think about it this way, right? You're trying to get that person, the partner, right? You're kind of a shitty person. This is a very blunt thing, right? You're kind of a shitty person. Like, yeah, you, you know, I want to get a partner, but I'm fucking shit. I'm fucking shitty, you know, like, but I want a partner. Like, it, how do you think that would kind of work? Like, if you're not, like, I mean, I guess it happens, you know, sometimes people change you, like I said before, but like, wouldn't you want to be like the best person you can be before you be with someone else? I don't know, you know, but then again, you know, when you're in your 20s and you're growing up, like, you kind of find out and discover who you are and get better, but that's my thing, you know, it's like, let me work on myself first before I can help someone else out, you know? Um... So with that, it's like, work on yourself, you know? Perks of being single is all your effort and time, for the most part, is to you, you know? I mean, yeah, sure, you have to give energy out to family, siblings, all that, but your me time is all your time, you know? Um, use that time to better yourself, you know? Like, be a better individual. You can do that by talking to mentors, going on YouTube, going on forums online, you know, get some meditation going. I need to do that. Um, another thing, so this energy you have, this effort, this me thing, it kind of goes off on um, number two, or the first one is put that energy, that, that energy you put towards looking for a relationship or being in a relationship to pursue your passion, your career, your hobby. Right? Like, you know, a relationship, you, you can't be that selfish. You know, it's a two-way street. You have to, you know, care for the other person and put a lot of effort and time towards this bond, this relationship you have. But if you don't have that person, you can put all that me time and focusing on what you want to do. What's something that you've always wanted to do, you know, but never did? Now's the time to do it, you know? Like, now's the time to start that, to pursue it. You know, for me, I make music, podcasting, vlogs. I can do this much because I don't necessarily have to put in the effort or relationship, like, energy towards someone else. Now, there's other people who do the same thing I do, who do a fantastic job and probably, and or better than what I do and still have a relationship, but... For me, it works out this way for me, you know, uh, at the end of the day, so far, I'm going to pick this over relationships, kind of how it is for me. Um, the third thing is, you don't have to worry about the baggage and issues that come with the relationships. Now, I'm not saying all relationships are all baggage and issues, they're wonderful, I've seen my friends smile in pictures uh, when they're with their partner on Instagram and Facebook. They look so happy. I've seen them in real life. It's so great. It's wonderful. Same time, I've seen people who just bend to me and talk to me how shitty their fucking relationship is. The problems, which is, it happens. And I'm like, damn, I thought I had it bad. I thought I was, like, fucking up in life. Dude, this is some, like, intense-ass shit. Like, I'm so glad I don't have these fucking problems. I'm not saying that in your face, but it's, like, not to them, but just, like, dude, these are, like, really tough. You know, these are, you know, you need, like, a therapist for this shit. And I'm not saying I'm avoiding relationship conflicts, but it's part of it, right? When you get into a relationship, you have to expect that there will be tough times. But if you choose not to be in a relationship... You know, if you don't want to be in one, you don't have to deal with that. Um, I read online, I guess you have the whole bed to yourself. I kind of like that, but I kind of cuddled my pillow. So 
you know, but with that said though, with that said, just because you're single doesn't mean you can't date or have hookups. No, I'm all for that. Like, it's kind of weird though because when I date, when I think about dating, I kind of think like, huh, how long is this going to last? Like, I just want to date. And so I, I like that dating period is kind of cute where you kind of text first and, you know, go out for like food and drinks and shit. But then like the next level, I don't know if I'm ready for it. You know, it, it's really weird. And it's tough. You know, you have to be open and honest with the person you're dating, seeing, you know, about how you feel because they may be on a different page. You know, um, let's see. Another one, I guess, is you can hang out with friends without having to worry about, you know, someone checking up on you. Now, granted, there are amazing partners out there that don't trip out. If you're out with the boys late, if you're out with the girls late, if you're hanging out, you know, you have that sense of trust. Um, but in, when I was dating, you're like, sometimes you'd be like, who's that? Who's this? Like on the phone, you're talking, and they hear the girl's voice over the phone. Like, who, who is that? Where are you at? I'm like, yo, I'm hanging out with friends. You know? And that can be annoying. That can be an issue. Um, and another thing, yeah, that's that. And like, yeah, you have your whole timing to yourself and everything. So... These are some perks I came up with that I enjoy, you know. Um, I like my alone time, like I said before. Um, I don't always have to be with someone. Uh, I live alone, I rent a room, and I'm always usually alone, except you know, on social media, because I'm always on that. I don't think counts as alone. But uh, yeah, you know, and I'm, I'm thriving, I think. You know, I've never been happier in life. Sure, there's issues here and there, something I can work on, but those issues don't have anything to do with being in a relationship, having to find a girl, settling down, because that can be pressure, you know? So for those of you who are just not for relationships or just single, it's okay. Work on yourself, you know? Be a better person. Not just so you can be a better person to the, your future relationship or whatever. It's yourself. You owe it to yourself to you know, be self-aware, be conscious, and a lot of these things, gotta do it on your own. You know? <sighs> Trying to do some yoga, but earlier, like yesterday, I'm like doing deep breaths right now, and I, um, I'm not very flexible, so it's just kinda hard, but I'm just working on my deep breaths and stuff. But um, yeah, if you're single, it's totally okay. There's nothing wrong with you. You know, work on yourself, use that time to pursue what you want to do, that career, passion, hobby. You want to trip about all that baggage. I'll say this though, for those of you single and hopeful to be in a relationship, I always felt like when you're super in tune with yourself, when you're doing really good, when you're out there like killing it, you attract the right people in your life, right? Like. Maybe, like, I don't know, you're walking down the street, you're super confident and happy, and women love confidence, and a woman sees you, you see her, and just smiling and, like, not really tripping, got nothing to lose kind of shit, and, like, she might like that, and she might approach you, you might approach her, you know, and she'll be like, oh, wow, Vaughn, you have really good interpersonal skills, you have such high emotional intelligence, you have great open communication, wow. You know, you want to hang out and get boba sometime? That kind of shit. That kind of shit's gonna work. You know, it's gonna it's gonna happen. But it takes time. You know, it takes time to unlearn that it's okay to be single. Um, don't get too bummed out when you see your friends post relationship uh, pictures on Instagram and Facebook. Because I guarantee you, half the fucking time they're complaining about each other and they're going through it. I'm just saying that to be funny, but I hope you're not if you're in a relationship, but I'm just saying, you know, social media sometimes can be pretty deceiving, it's not everything, it's a highlight reel, just letting you know, uh, which is a hint on the next episode on Dragon Ball Z, <laughs> I'm just fucking tripping, I'm gonna be funny right now, um, yeah, like, my next episode is gonna be with Nina and Corey, uh, the comedians, we're gonna be talking about social media and it's negative effects. But in the meantime, it's the end of the episode. 
Hope you enjoyed it. Hope it gave you some light in your dark times. At the same time, I hope you get some consensually and all in a friendly manner in a respectful manner. Hope you get some. It's fucking cuffing season. Go out there, guys, with your fucking gray sweatpants and your white t-shirt. For the girls, anything you rock is fucking hot. Hope you're out there, you laying it down, you're killing it, you're safe, you're wearing protection, you're being, you know, uh, consenting, you're being a responsible sex partner, you know, all that shit. I wish you the best. This is Vaughn, the Vaughn Cash Show. You can find me on Instagram at the Vaughn Cash Show. I will post that on a YouTube link. Uh, this will also be available on Spotify, Google Play, or Google Podcast, Apple Music, iHeartRadio, and YouTube. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Awesome. Yeah.